What's up, y'all? This is Thavius Beck, Ableton Certified Instructor at DubSpot, current instructor of DubSpot's Ableton Live online course, uh, teaching level two, actually. What I want to show you guys today is something that we touch on in much more detail in level two of the online course, and that is how to use clip envelopes. So I'm just going to give you a brief demonstration of uh, what the clip, clip envelopes are and how you can use them. Right now I have two different tracks. I have a synth right here, and then I have some drums here. So I'm gonna just play it for you real quick so you can hear it. Okay, so you get the basic gist of that. Now with clip envelopes, what I'm able to do is I'm able to automate certain parameters directly on an audio or a MIDI clip. So instead of needing to record this to the arrangement screen and do my automation over here, I can do my automation directly on this clip in the session view. So how do we do that? Let's look in the lower left hand corner down here. We have these three buttons. The button with the E, you guessed it, stands for envelopes. So we click that and now we can see our audio clip because that's what we're working with in this case, an audio clip and we can see the clip envelope here, okay? This line, this is showing us the status or the position of whatever parameter we're affecting, all right? And we can choose that parameter by going over here to these little drop-down boxes. So for instance, let's say I wanted to maybe create like some sort of volume slicer effect where the volume cuts out every quarter note or every eighth note or something, okay? I can do that very easily by going over here my top drop down box, this is going to show more broad areas where I can do my automation. Uh, on the clip means that I'll be automating certain things in this area here. So uh, for instance, the volume, uh, if I automate the volume here, this is going to happen before we get to the volume fader on the track. Okay, this is important for a few different reasons, which I'll touch on in just a bit. Um, and then we can automate at the mixer stage. And at the mixer, these are going to be the things that are happening here. Okay, so our panning, the muting, volume, stuff like that. So what I want to do is I want to automate the volume directly on this clip. Okay. If we look over here, we can see that the length of this envelope is the same as the length of our clip. All right, we have a 20 bar synth line here. And I don't want to have to draw in, you know, a volume drop every, <laughs> you know, over the course of 20 bars. So I can change this. If you look right here, there's a button that says region and loop. If it's linked, that means that the length of our envelope will be the same as the length of our clip. If I click this and make it unlinked, now I can make my envelope whatever length that I want. So it can be longer or shorter than the clip. It can loop, or I can make it so that it doesn't loop. All right, so in this case, I want this to loop, and I'm gonna change the length to one bar. I'm gonna zoom in. All right, so. We're affecting the clip volume, okay? And this is the line right here, all right? Right now we're at 100%, so we're at maximum volume. It's 100% of the volume right here on our clip. So now I'm gonna go up here to my pen tool, and every other 16th note, I'm gonna make the volume go down to 0%, like this, okay? So let's play this, and as I'm playing it, you'll notice that I'm doing the automation on the clip, okay? <laughs> Now, if you look over here, you can see that every time the volume is dropping, you see this dot right here. That's letting us know that we've automated something on this clip. Okay. Now, why would I want to automate the volume on the clip directly as opposed to automating the volume here on the mixer? Well, let's put an effect on here, and I'll show you exactly why. All right. Let's go to, let's say, how about a reverb? Okay, just for the sake of, I'm going to put a reverb directly on this track. Okay, let's change the quality to high. The dry wet percentage, let's bring it down a bit. So let's play this so we can hear what it sounds like.
Okay, so without the reverb. With the reverb. Okay. Now, if you notice, even though the volume on our clip, let's go back to our envelope here. And, uh, oh, actually, we're looking at the wrong thing. Uh, another thing with the clip envelopes is that the last thing that you've manipulated on that track, again, I was just touching the reverb and the decay time. You see that that's what shows up here. It's actually pretty convenient. Uh, and anything that you've put automation on, anything that you've affected, you know, drawn a clip envelope, it'll have a red dot there to let you know. All right, so now we can see where we're at. So even though the volume is cutting out every 16th note or so, you know, about, we still have the decay trail on our reverb, okay? The decay time is not affected on our reverb. It's not cutting in and out the same way that the volume on the sample is. Now, let's change this. And now I'm gonna do a similar pattern, but I'm gonna do it directly on the mixer, track volume, okay? And you're gonna notice a big difference. Now again, the region loop, it's linked. I wanna unlink this. I'm gonna make my loop one bar. And right now my grid is set to 30 second notes, which is a bit too much. So I'm gonna change this to 16th notes. Right click, go to fixed grid, bam. All right, so here we go. Now, notice the difference. See, now that reverb, the decay, is also getting cut off. And the reason why is because the volume of the track right here in the mixer, this also affects the volume of the reverb. So as we cut this volume all the way down to zero dB, it's also cutting off the effect of the reverb, okay? If we change the volume right here on the clip instead, okay, see right here we're in the mixer. If we change that, go back to the clip volume. If we change it here, we're changing the volume of the clip before it actually gets to the effect, okay? And then the effect isn't affected because we're automating the clip volume before it ever touches the reverb. See? So while we're messing with it, why not automate the decay time as well? Okay. Let's go back here. Reverb, decay time. See, it's the last thing that we touched, so it's already selected, which is quite convenient. Okay, so I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to leave this linked now to the length of uh, my clip, and I'm going to click off of my pencil tool. Now I can double click on this line here, create a little dot, and uh, actually let's go to the end of this, double click, create another dot, and I just want to draw a slope, okay? So that the decay time is going to gradually increase over the course of 20 bars. You see the decay time right here? Now one thing that's important to note is that when we're automating the clip envelope here, okay, you're dealing with 0% to 100%. Now what exactly is 100%? Is that maximum of whatever that parameter is? Not necessarily. 100% is whatever you have it currently set to, okay? So the decay time I have right now, the maximum, if it's set to 100%, it's gonna be 2.89 seconds, okay? I actually want this to be a bit more dramatic once it gets to 100%. So I'm gonna set it at 6.53 seconds, okay? Now let's play it again. And you can see this gradually increasing.
Okay. So now we've automated the volume directly on the clip and we've automated this reverb here as well. Let's just do one more thing just for the heck of it. Uh, I'm going to bring in an auto filter just because I really like the auto filter plugin a lot. We're going to bring this in before the reverb. All right. And let's see. Okay. And I think I want the filter to gradually sweep up as well. Okay. To gradually open up this low pass filter. So let's go to, uh, here we go. All right. Now we're going to select our auto filter and we're going to select, yep. The frequency cutoff. Okay. So that's right here. So again, um, I'm actually okay with this being linked to the length of my audio sample. And we're just going to draw a fade in like that. So let's hear how this sounds. Interesting. So again, we're able to do this directly on a clip without recording this into the arrangement view and doing our automation there. And again, we could duplicate this clip and each duplicate could have completely different automation on there. So then that way we can have the same exact sample playing or if it's a MIDI clip, the same exact pattern playing, but just have all types of different variations going on with our automation. So again, it's just a nice technique to know, uh, something that's very useful and can help you really bring a lot of life to your music. So hopefully you've been inspired. Go forth with this technique and create something beautiful. Again, my name is Thavius Beck, Ableton Certified Instructor at DubSpot and current teacher of Level 2 of DubSpot's Ableton Live online course. Signing off. Welcome to DubSpot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, DubSpot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you've come to the right place. Come explore DubSpot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.